Welcome to the studio, ladies and gentlemen. Wherever you're watching this from, however you're watching this, thank you for joining me in the studio today. And today I'm painting for you my take on the beautiful California coastline. Uh, this is a picture. You can see it in the middle right-hand side of the screen. This is a picture I took on a walk around the town I live in a couple of days ago. And uh, I just want to paint it. I'm trying to do more seaside paintings and uh, get more into painting the community into which I live. And I'm painting the sky. I'm doing it upside down so all the sky stays in the sky. It doesn't run over everything else. A little bit of cobalt blue here with a little bit of Payne's Gray mixed in to give maybe an interesting sky there. I don't know. We'll find out. Uh, so the paints that I'm using, I'm putting it on here. The paints that I'm using are M. Graham paints. They are my favorite paints. I keep them always on my table as a paint here in the studio. I'm using a little bit of uh, burnt umber here. That's a little maroon perylene. Right, if you look at the picture, the rocks are pretty gray. I'm trying to add a little bit of color to these rocks. Uh, maybe make this a bit more dynamic. I don't know. We'll see how it goes. Uh, I think it turns out pretty well in the end, but you can be the judge of that. I'll get into more of these paints in a little bit. Uh, but the brush that I'm using that you see in my hand right there, that's a Raphael Soft aqua brush it's a nice size size four not too big for this painting but holds a ton of water uh, you will see me using also in this painting da vinci Casaneo brushes uh, they're a synthetic hair brush also hold quite a bit of water and come to a pretty good point uh, also uh, let's getting back to the paints. As I said, they are all M. Graham paints. I use a lot of cobalt blue, a little ultramarine blue in this one, sepia, neutral tint, Payne's gray, <clears throat> the maroon perylene, some alizarin crimson, burnt umber, and some yellow ochre, the, the major uh, paint colors that I'm using in here. And what I'm trying to do, I'm not trying to uh, get any specific shape dialed in right here. What I'm trying to do is just cover the, the paper with a thin coating of paint to start with. And then I'll go back and uh, we'll start putting details in later on as we do this. So you can see I'm just dropping in some colors. And the rocks that I previously painted are holding their edge just a little bit, which uh, is going to give just a little bit of definition to them. One of the things I'm trying to do in this painting is each time I go back to uh, my, my palette is I'm trying to vary the color of my paint just a little bit. Hopefully that gives uh, a bit of interest to the viewer as they are looking at the painting. We'll find out. I don't remember if I told you the paper that I'm using here. What I've got is a 12 by 12 sheet of B paper. It's a, it's a thin, albeit thin, 100% cotton uh, watercolor paper, rough, sur uh, I'm sorry, cold pressed surface. It's pretty smooth, but it's, they list it as cold press. All right, here, everything is dried. Uh, the, my page is taped down to this plastic board because I bought it in a giant a roll of this paper because I'm a little mad sometimes. <laughs> and if I don't tape it down, uh, it won't stay down. It will just curl right up. So I tape these ones down. Okay. Uh, as you can see, our first layer is totally dry, and I can start to define a lot of shapes of the rocks here. I'm going to start with the, the bit of this coastline that's furthest away from us, and I'm going to start by defining the outlines of these shapes, and then we'll fill in the inside. I want a little bit lighter 
as it comes towards the outside and a little bit darker as it goes towards the inside of this rock. And you can see I'm just following along here. Actually, I'm kind of making up my own uh, shape to these in, in many places. <clears throat> and here's what it looks like. A little fuller, a little richer in color down there. Right? Some blue, some neutral tint in there. And uh, the color that we put down on that first layer of paint really is going to help to shine through and give some interesting colors to these rocks as we can see them. There we go. Look at that. You can see that big yellow bit right in the middle of that rock really gives a lot of interesting uh, color to it rather than just being a gray rock that's there. And there we go. There's a first little bit. Well, let's see. We can define the, sh the outside shape of this rock here and the inside shape of it. Again, a, some darks as you're going inside, lighter as you're going to the outside of these rocks. There we go. And around the rocks that actually touch the water. There we go. And as I come out towards the ends of these, I'm using more yellows, oranges, and ochres. And towards the inside, uh, more browns, blues, and uh, maybe a bit of sepia uh, or neutral tint in there to darken it down just a bit. But you can begin to see some shape and some definition to these rocks already, and we really haven't done much of anything. We've got a long way to go on this. All right, and now I've got to pick and choose, really, because um, I've got a wet uh, a bit of paint there. I don't want to paint into kind of that middle rock or the front rock, so I'm going to do a little bit on the bit of the rock that's closest to us. I'm going to try to make it a bit darker, which should help pull it towards us a little bit. And then this just runs down into that green area. There's weeds, not really grass in there, but weeds and uh, other kinds of plants in there somewhere. And we're going to build up kind of a layer effect. One rock stacked on another, stacked on another. In fact, we're going to do that on the the bottom along the, sh the actual shore itself right here when it comes down to it. <clears throat> and let's see what we've got coming up. Pick a rock in there and let's go with it. Uh, <laughs> which one do I want to do? I, uh, you know, I'm gonna, just going to let everything dry and then I'm going to come because that grass touches everything. I'm going to start with it a little bit. A little cobalt green in there, maybe a little bit of phthalo green, some nice gamboge, a little azo orange. I don't know, I want to get a variety of colors in here. There, look at that nice orangey green in there, light color. Push that back, back there. And with this grass, now I can define the rocks right on the shoreline. I shouldn't say grass. It's not really grass. This green area, weeds, bushes, whatever these are on the side of this rock, whatever can cling on and grow. And there it is. I'm not trying to make any specific color green. I'm not overly blending the green or I'm not trying to overly blend the green, like I said. Trying to give this a nice, uh, a nice blend of uh, a nice loose blend <clears throat> of a number of different colors. There's some cobalt going straight cobalt going in there. There we go. And with that, <clears throat> define the rocks uh, that border right on the water. You can see that there. <clears throat> and. Now, having done that, I can come back and start to put in some of these other rocks. Everything else has dried. I put a little yellow ochre way out on the side there, and I'm going to draw that all the way down. 
<clears throat> a little blue. That's just straight ultramarine. Just touched it with ultramarine there. Maybe there's a big shadow back there causing that little ultramarine to look like it's in there. Look at that. Now we've got a couple of rocks <clears throat> in order and they look like they're kind of extending out away from us there. Let's get that one back there. Good idea. A little ochre. And here, if you don't go all the way right to the edge of that rock, uh, then what you end up with is a highlight. Uh, so you don't have to worry about it. You don't have to worry about painting and recovering everything. And there's a little bit of color underneath so that uh, it's not going to be stark white. You're not going to have to worry too much about it. But look at this now. Now already it looks like we've got a huge procession of, of rocks extending out into the water there. Let's put a little blue down on the bottom. Here we go. Just to create a little separation between those big rocks there. All right, and now we've got to do the stuff right along the shoreline. So let's get on with that. There's a little one out here. It's all black, or mostly black. Seems like I'm starting to paint off the page or off the viewing scene just a little bit. Maybe I'm going to move it back. There we go. Uh, and these rocks out here are always wet. They're always getting splashed. High tide or low, it doesn't matter. And where they always stay wet, they seem to get a little blacker. A little bit darker. Maybe there's a little green thrown in there. I don't know, but I want to lighten part of that up. Seemed a little dark to me. And just like we did with the rocks uh, on the top half of this, we can now define those rocks that are right on the shoreline. And I'm going to do this by putting in the rocks that are the, putting in the color that's uh, like at the bottom that might have a little bit of a shadow on it and drawing that out a little bit. And then really darkening right at the bottom with a little bit of straight neutral tint. Maybe a little sepia in there. And uh, just uh, really setting that, that stone in place. And we're just going to repeat that time and time again here. I don't know how many rocks we have here. 10 or 12 to go. Something like that. And, and if you try something like this on your own, the kind of fun thing about it is uh, even though you may have drawn it in here a little bit, uh, you really get to define where these rocks are all on your own. <laughs> so you're really kind of building it as you go along. All right, this, this rock looks like I've put a little uh, a little bit of maroon perylene in there. Maybe it's got a little bit of extra red in that one. I don't know. There's that rock. Uh, now we can move on to the next one. Here it is down here. Like I said, nice and dark where it reaches the water, where it actually touches the water, right on that shoreline. There's a nice rock. Everything else a little bit lighter around it. Good, nice, nice and dark. <clears throat> And then we're going to move right on to the next one. Oh, perfect. Let's do this one right in front. I like it. I like it. And maybe we'll put a little bit of shadow on this one or something. If we don't do it now, I know we're going to do it in a little bit. Uh, and so I'm calling everything that I'm doing right now kind of the second layer on this painting. Whether, uh, whether I've gone back and, and during this uh, step and put on two colors or three colors of paint, whatever. The initial wash was the first layer of paint. This is the second layer of paint. And uh, this is basically going to be it for what we're doing other than uh, some details in the final step. Hoping to only have to put three layers of paint on this what I'm calling three layers of paint on this there we go <clears throat> and as we do this we're just jumping around trying to let uh, let some of these rocks dry up I'm trying to uh, 
uh, not touch to let them run together and as you can see as we do it it's just developing all these rocks right in front of us and making a really nice uh, really nice uh, composition for us looks like I'm moving over to the side again come on Michael move back over to the left at least I'm painting somewhat on the left so you can see that all right a little neutral tint a little I actually got a little green in here it looked like there we go and it's just defining these as it's all we're doing this is kind of a repetition just defining a rock, defining a rock. Get it and move on to the next one. All right, got a little bigger rock here. I don't know if this was exactly how this one was supposed to look, but this is what it's going to look like now. All right, it's got a little bit of red in here, a little bit of uh, Payne's gray. There it is. Uh, we'll just make it go just like this. Out into the water a little bit there perfect and a shadow on this side fill it in and we can just kind of as long as that's wet we can move that paint around and make it look like anything we want to however we want to get it in there and move on to the next one And pretty quickly, we've gotten a, a painting that really does look like a shoreline. It looks like uh, uh, it could be sticking out right in the water. Well, and now it's sticking out into something. Our water looks a little, um, well, our water's leaving a little bit to be desired at the moment. Uh, I don't can't tell if it's a placid day on the ocean or if it's, uh, so stirred up that we don't get any specific waves. I don't know. We're going to take care of that uh, before we're done with this whole thing. But um, don't worry about it. We're, we're going to come back and get that. But we're just going to keep moving ahead here. I'm mixing up some, some nice green here. Looks like some phthalo green, some ultramarine blue. <clears throat> Trying to make uh, my own gray, maybe. Let's get a little bit more gray in here. A bit maybe of a green gray. I'm sorry for the, the stoppage in talking. I had to get a big cup of coffee, a big drink of a cup of coffee there. <clears throat> oh, that little rock looks pretty nice. Here's another one over here. A little red going in this one, a little bit of that maroon, a little bit of our homemade uh, green gray down below it, and that's going to be a nice little rock there too. And then right along the bottom, I'm going to darken it up. There's my neutral tint going right in. Perfect. Connect those up. You got a whole bunch of rocks sitting along the shoreline. So before we get too far into this, I should say I hope you guys uh, enjoy seeing seascapes and uh, this kind of painting. Uh, leave a comment down below. Let me know if you do like these. Um, if you don't, if you don't, I'm sorry. I'm I'm planning on doing more painting from uh, around the little village that I live in. Maybe some boats. Maybe the downtown area. Definitely some more shoreline. Uh, please let me know if you like uh, seascapes or if you don't like seascapes. Um, and and let me know some things that you might like to see. Let a, Write a comment down below, and and uh, if I like the comment, or if I not if I like the comment, if I like the suggestion, I'll certainly uh, give it a shot to, to paint. I'm always up for a good challenge. So um, 
we're almost done with these rocks now we're getting pretty close pretty close just a few extra little bits on the shoreline here filling in some gaps is really what we're doing here we go pretty much done and I really do like I, I said it a moment ago, but I really do like the fact that you can, in very short order, um, just create all these rocks, even if you didn't have them pre-drawn, uh, or even if you don't want to stay with the ones you have pre-drawn, you can make these rocks up pretty quickly just by defining the shape as you go along. It's pretty interesting. Okay, um, so now what we're going to do is we are going to put on some Oh, some details onto here, right? Some craggly bits. If you look at the reference photo, there are some splits in the rock and, you know, some fissures and whatnot, a few holes out there. So I'm going to put a little bit of that on here, and hopefully uh, it'll add some texture to the surface of these, uh, these rocks out here. Just not too much, just enough to you know, add some interest to it. And I don't know exactly which way these rocks fall. I can see the way that they fall in my reference photo, uh, my painting, maybe they're a little different, I don't know. They don't have to be exactly the same. But uh, a little bit of detail on here. Some blue, basically, right, I'm basically using a little ultramarine here, uh, either a little sepia, or a little burnt umber, something to make a nice, uh, well, for these, uh, a nice warmish, a uh, grayish color, right? These rocks, uh, they don't, uh, obviously, it's not a cold day. There's so many warm colors in here. I could do this again and make the whole thing a bit bluer, a bit grayer. Um, it would seem like a colder day when this was done. But this seems like a pretty warm day, so our shadows are going to be a bit warm. Uh, so, so a, a bit a bit browner on my gray, a bit warmer gray. Maybe even on these ones up here, some straight sepia or straight burnt umber uh, on these rocks. But just I, I'm not following any pattern when I do this just dropping in some lines because that's kind of how it goes and I'm not I'm not doing them all horizontal some of them you see are vertical some of them are diagonal just wherever it strikes me that there needs to be a line in here as these rocks are, are laying and and I should be doing it <laughs> <laughs> I hope I'm trying. Uh, as I'm getting a little further forward in the painting, those lines should be getting a little bit darker. Yeah, these these rocks out here have have a some little craggly bits to them too, maybe not too many. <clears throat> these ones are getting pounded by the ocean all the time. So while they may have a a crack or two in them, they're they're mostly uh, rounded off and not too not too craggly. Here we go. I'm coming back with a little darker color in here. <clears throat> you can see these are a little deeper as they get a little closer, or the shadows are a little deeper as it gets a little closer. Let's make them a little darker. <clears throat> Bring that whole rock closer to us. <clears throat> and then one of the last things we need to do on this video is put some grasses on here <clears throat> excuse me put some green on here to allow for some grass now I have this little tiny brush this is a Windsor Newton Cotman brush and I don't use it for much but uh, I think a few little grasses here and there no they're not exactly 
uh, what's on the reference photo. And again, I don't think that matters. That reference photo is just a reference. I'm not trying to copy it. Uh, so I'm just going to draw some grasses on there. And I'm going to draw a few. There we go. I got some nice spiky grasses on there. And a few in front of the rock uh, right here to kind of push that back a little bit. There we go. <clears throat> it's just really dark, almost straight. Uh, for this, I'm using a lot of olive green. It's a, it's a nice dark green. It's kind of semi-opaque, which is to say, I guess, mostly transparent. <laughs> Uh, but it does a good job of, of covering some. And then this, this green kind of comes down the hill here, hillside here too as it goes towards the water. So I want to give some indication of that. So I'm going to draw a couple of lines on here in that green, a nice dark green. There we go. And this is straight olive green that I'm using, or nearly straight olive green. I'm going to darken this up and hope to pull this corner uh, towards us a little bit. There we go. Something like that. It's looking pretty good, pretty good, pretty good. And... Basically, the only thing we have left after this is our water, which I will admit it's taken me quite a while as I live here on the coast to tackle painting water. Water seems to always give me trouble, but I think I've cracked it. I think I've cracked how to paint water. <clears throat> and what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay down a nice dark bead of of uh, paint uh, and then on the back side of it I'm gonna paint white right so I'm gonna get a nice bit of paint on here this is ultramarine a little phthalo green on here right here's some here's my wave painting my wave on there you blend that a little bit in front of it I don't want a super hard edge right there we go uh, and I've got a little white. Let's see if I can paint that off the back. I'm going to do a little bit more with white in a, in a minute, but uh, my white hardens hard, hard, hard on my, on my palette. So it's a little tough. Some more ultramarine in here. Here's the next wave coming right in there. Right in the thicker this, all uh, this, is right if this were if this were a taller wave you'd make that blue thicker this is a smaller ish wave and there's a third wave right in here all oh, just running right this is lapping into the shore this is not big uh it's not a big wave right there and then on the back side of this i'm going to put some of this white and that's going to be the white water coming off the top of this there it is, and that's how I'm trying to do my waves. Um, like I said, it's taken me a long time to figure out waves. This seems a, a simple, easy way to do it, and it's fairly effective. It looks, it looks pretty wave-ish. Uh, I don't like uh, the, what I've got on the palette here, so I've got some white. You can see me trying to get it out here. Uh, this is a this is a very uh, this is a white gouache actually is what I've got here. Just dip a little bit on there and see if I can't get that to come out. Uh, it's a little better. It's a little better. Come on, uh, my white. I need to start like a week early to get that white to come out. A lot of water in there trying to loosen that up and there's my there are my waves nice and easy just like that let it come off the back and you get some nice simple waves uh, and if we put some other marks on here a little bit here a little bit there 
then uh, it'll look like there's actually some more movement on that wave. We are coming to the end of this painting. I hope you really enjoyed this. I enjoyed having you all in the studio with me here today. Uh, I am fairly active on Instagram and Twitter. Uh, you can follow me. The links are down below. I have my own website, which I always say I'm going to keep updated. And uh, it's, pretty, it's hard to keep it updated. I'm going to try to do better in the new year. I've got a link to my Etsy store down below. And I believe a Teespring down below on this also. But that's all I've got for you guys today. I hope you enjoyed seeing this painting. I like how I, I hope you like how it came together. Like I said, I enjoyed having you all here in the studio with me today. Thank you so much, and we'll see you next time. Yes, this is going to look good in a frame. I don't know. Maybe here, maybe there, somewhere. I don't know. Anyway, that's it. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.